Okay. We're good to go. Okay, start when you're ready. We're good. Oh, we're okay. All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, I am Jackie McLaughlin with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And I am so pleased to be able to provide this series of Master of Memory with you. It is a six week series. So we start today with our first one and then the next five weeks we'll be on from 12 to one. And we'll be talking about uh, memory and how that uh, affects us and how we can affect our memory too. And just basic information about how our memory works also. So a couple of little things that I want to share with you. One is we are recording the session. So I invite you to still mute, unmute yourself if you want to. You're all muted at this point to unmute if you want to add because there will be interaction during the session. So I want that interaction. And if you want to, you can chat. And Kathy, um, Ms. Patterson will be uh, monitoring the chat box for me because when this is up, I can't see the chat box. So she'll be monitoring that for me. Um, the other is that um, it's about 45 minutes. And that depends on some of how much, you know, some of the discussion. If we get into a lot of discussion, it may be a little longer, but it's designed for about 45 minutes to an hour. One quick thing I want to remind you, I did send everyone uh, that signed up and registered for the series an, an email yesterday. If you didn't get that, be sure and let me know uh, in the chat box or, or tell me before we end the call. Um, that means that maybe your email, I didn't get it in there correctly. But um, you should have gotten a, an email from me with the handout and also the um, uh, link to our survey tool. And there is no name associated to that survey tool. It's just a code number that you put in. And that's how you're known to us. It's just that code number. So please fill that out for us. It helps us um, improve our programs. It also helps me with my reporting that I truly did uh, provide the, the program for you all. So, um, before we get, begin, do we have any questions about our technical or logistical uh, process before we start? Okay. All right, well, we are heading into lesson one and our lesson one starts out with, am I losing my mind? And sometimes we all say that everyone, I see Wendy smiling. All right, that's really cool. I, <laughs> you, you know, we all say that, right? Sometime or another in our life. So a common misconception about the aging brain is that there is nothing that can be done about memory and that new information cannot be learned. Well, you're gonna learn through these series that that is not necessarily a true statement. We are constantly adding to our brain and, it, and the brain absorbs well into our uh, older years. And so it's not the ability, we can we continue to maintain the ability to learn and learn new skills. Often simple lapses in memory or decline in recall and recall speed are mistaken for a type of dementia such as Alzheimer's disease. This lesson and the entire series will help provide information about memory function and various strategies to help minimize negative stereotypes and build confidence. So look at the screen and it says, senior moment, brain lapse, it's just my age. How many of you have used those terms before or heard somebody say those phrases? I see Wendy waving her hand and, and nodding, yes. Yep. You, you've heard that and we've all said, oh, well, that's just beginning to get, there's my age coming up or, or um, you know, gee. You know, what's the matter with me? I guess I'm getting, you know, brain fog. You heard brain fog too, right? Any other words that y'all maybe heard too? So we've used all of these at different times. And uh, throughout this series, we're going to work on two assumptions. One, 
while some change may be expected as you age, that doesn't mean you can't do something about it. You can be proactive in using some strategies and lifestyle adaptations. And number two, if you don't learn or receive good information, you cannot remember it. Your memory is only as good as the information you take in. So I'll repeat that. Your memory is only as good as the information you take in. And I've added my own part in what you learn. So your ability to learn, and we're gonna talk about that in a couple of slides. Your ability to learn makes a difference on what your memory is. So there's two types of intelligence. We've got crystallized and fluid. So intelligence can be described as the capacity for learning, reasoning, and understanding. We divide that into those two types, crystallized and fluid. Crystallized is based on wisdom and experience. It stays relatively stable with increasing age. We might say crystallized intelligence is knowledge dependent on acquired information. And so examples of crystallized intelligence include your vocabulary, your skills with numbers, your ability to make judgments based on, on decisions and experiences. Those are solid. A good way to remember what your crystallized intelligence is, is to think of crystal, hard and clear, things that you've got in your memory that is, is, is in there and it's firm. On the other hand, fluid intelligence deals with the ability to think and make decisions on the spot. You don't have to think, you know, a red light means stop. When you're traveling, you know, green light, we go. We don't, we don't think about it. We don't have to learn that on the spot. You already know that. It, but it's, it's your fluid intelligence is working there. Studies show that this type of intelligence reaches its peak early in adulthood and begins to decline in subsequent, subsequent years. Fluid intelligence can be described as knowledge that is not dependent on acquired information. Your, your ability to think about a situation and react quickly to it, as well as your attention span are all tied to fluid intelligence. Think about fluid intelligence like a fluid, I'm using that term. Sometimes it's clear and fast, and sometimes it might be murky and slow. A simple way to think about the differences is to think about each name, obviously. Crystal, again, gives you the sense that something is hard and unbreakable thoughts that come from inside your brain, your memories, your knowledge. Fluid gives you the sense of something changing or unstable. Thoughts that come from your environment, which changes moment by moment. So while intelligence remains relatively stable over our life cycle, the speed at which you process and recall information may decline. Not necessarily as a result of age, but as a result of not keeping your brain as active. So you can keep your brain active and you can keep that speed and accuracy, which is in your fluid intelligence. You can keep it healthy. And I like to use that staying uh, with brain, healthy brain. Okay, how does my memory work? Let's look at, at how our memory, how, we, how it takes in and how we, we process that. So we have, Sensory, short-term, and long-term. When you receive information, it's managed in those three ways. Sensory memory contains information received immediately from a person's senses by the brain. It, you touch something, it's hot, your brain, you, you, you automatically sense it, it's hot, you remove your hand if you've touched it. So it's sensory, sensory memory. You know that hot means move your hand. Your brain then quickly decides whether this information needs to be processed further or disregarded. It's, it's, you already have reacted. If our brains try to remember everything, the capacity of the brain would be overloaded in a matter of minutes. Most things in our sensory memory that are processed or further processed are pieces of information that meet our basic needs and interests are things that are out of the ordinary. Everything else just goes away. So we, we see things and we, we have a memory, but if it's not needed, our brain says, I, I don't really need that anymore. And it moves on. If the information is pro further processed, it moves into short-term memory or the working memory. 
your short-term memory holds information for several minutes, then disregards if it's not repeated or rehearsed. So short-term memory, you look up a phone number, you use the phone number, you don't need the phone number anymore, you don't remember the phone number. So that's your short term. It was fine for the minute. You remembered it when you needed it, but then it, you didn't need it. So your brain did not continue to keep it. This type of memory will hold about seven pieces of information. Again, phone numbers or zip codes or serial numbers. That's your working memory. And it's where it's also where you remember things from your long-term memory and process them to suit your needs. If a piece of information makes it through short term, and is deemed important enough to go further, then it may be encoded into your long-term memory where it lasts forever. How many of you know your social security number? Mm -hmm. You know it, it's been, it's used a lot. So you're gonna keep that in your long-term memory, your, your driver's license number. I bet most of y'all can, can state your driver's license number because you use it, but it's been put into that long-term memory because it's needed regularly. Long-term memory allows information to be retrieved even after it's been stored in the brain and out of the conscious thought. So somebody just pops in and says, what's your driver's license number? You're gonna to have to think a minute, it's there. There's nothing wrong with that. It just has to come up. And I kind of call it like a big, a big room with file cabinets. And you're gonna to have to process through those and find it. But, but the more that you've used it, it's in your long-term and it's stayed. So it's crystallized, it's stayed in there. Um, information in long-term memory could have been learned or encoded 10 minutes ago or 10 decades ago. Storage takes a long time and retrieval can be tough sometimes. That's the thing that we call, well, I've got a memory lapse. And that's when that recall is not instantaneous. But don't beat yourself up on that because it's in there and it just takes a while to move forward. And as we age, that's what we said earlier in the slide, it sometimes is just a little slower as we age. It's still there, but it's slower. Um, that's why sometimes you uh, sit up in the middle of the night and remember the name of the person or a song that was on your tip of your tongue earlier. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too. So uh, I actually had that funny, I had that happen the other day. It was a cousin and I could not, I you knew her sister's name and I couldn't call it start with a T. Well, probably three or four hours later, I went, oh, that's her name, you know? And it just, it came to me, but it took, it was stored in there, but I hadn't used it in a long time and thought about it in a long time. Uh, but those are, those are what happens in, with your memory. So three, three types. So how do we learn? Now that we have talked about intelligence and memory, let's talk about how we learn things. Generally, every person learns a new piece of information in three main ways. You hear it, you see it, or you do it. So three, those three types of learners are auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Or as I would like to say, they're hearers, they're seers, and they're meddlers. Of course, one person may use a combination of three. We all probably use, all of us probably use all three of those to learn things, but there tends to be a prominent one for each person. Once you discover how you're best learning, how you best learn certain pieces of information, then you, those are the ways that you remember things uh, as you maximize that ability. Um, you'll recall one of our tenants in the, uh, in the series is that remember earlier when we said, if you don't learn it, you don't remember it. So if I don't learn your name, I don't remember your name. So I see a few of y'all on the screen, so your, your cameras are open. So in my mind, I'm, a, I'm a, also a visual learner. So to me, I, and Wendy, I don't mean pick on you, but I can see you and your name is associated. So in my mind, I'm already learning Wendy's face and Wendy's name because it's there and it's, and it's I'm a visual learner, but I have to see it. So it, it makes it, it solidifies itself in me. And that's how I, how I learn. So every one of us, we're gonna break these down. We all learn in different ways. And I have to touch things too. So you'll see, I use my hands a lot too. You don't see all of them, but I use my hands a lot whenever I, I do things. So 
we kind of ask the question, what type are you? So I'm going to read three different sentences here, and you think a little bit about what you are, and then you can, you can chat or you can unmute. So whenever I buy something new that needs to be put together, I usually read the directions from beginning to end before starting. I read aloud or have someone read the directions aloud to me. Or I leave the directions <laughs> and begin assembling immediately. So do you identify with one of those? Anybody want to share? I see some nods. I do the first one. You do the first one. You read the directions. My daughter is a read the direction person and she has chastised me many a time. Did you read the directions? <laughs> and so, yes. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Is there anything in the chat, Kathy? No. Okay. No chat. All right. Okay. So, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I leave the directions and begin assembling immediately. I'm, I'm bad about that. Then if I run into trouble, then I read the directions. And I've <laughs> always been that way from the time I was a little kid. It's terrible, but yes. Well, but, but that's, how, that, that's how you learn or how you have learned, and that's what you use. So, I'm impatient. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so... So I bet many of you have seen someone that uses all of these. And in this example in here is fits one of my friends perfectly. It says, for an example of, you've seen the person that's putting a barbecue grill together without looking at the, the, uh, the instructions and laugh. But, you know, in actuality, that was the way that they wanted to put it together. Never read the instructions, but put the whole barbecue grill together without, without looking at anything. But on the second half of that, again, I have a daughter and she reads the directions and then she does it and reads a part and does it. So all of those are different ways that, that we have learned. And, Jen, and there's nothing Martha, wrong with any of those. What yeah, was that, Kathy? Martha says that she reads the directions. <laughs> okay. I can see that. I know Martha and I can see that very well, Martha. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks everyone for sharing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the auditory learner. And let's learn, you know, because as we know our friends and family, it helps us to kind of see what kind of learner they are because that's how you can communicate with them and maybe communicate even more effectively with them. So an auditory learner is someone who prefers to hear information rather than reading it or experience, experiencing it hands-on. An auditory learner may need to read things aloud so that he or she can hear it and then process it for storage. Auditory learners normally memorize things by repeating them aloud over and over again. Why might, a question for y'all, why might an auditory learner dominate a conversation? Why do you think they would do that? Because they could go on and on and on. They they hear they, they just keep hear. going. Yes, they need reinforcing to hear. their learning, reinforcing yes. it, yes. reinforcing their learning. They're needing to hear that, and so they're learning in that they're they're hearing it. So that learning conversation. So be aware, you know, that person that's dominating the conversation. Maybe it's because they it's how they're learning too. Um, why might an auditory learner dislike writing and having trouble reading body language? Is there any is there any verbalization in writing or or body language? They have to look. If you dislike writing, you you have to look, and you have to look at the body language. So you're not really looking or seeing. You're you're, you're that's you're what I hearing. think. Yeah, you're not hearing anything. So they're so you're, you're, that's, yeah. So because they're both those are both nonverbal forms of communication, just the writing. So that see that auditory learner, that's not their preferred way. Another question I can I pose is, can an auditory learner who isn't wearing his hearing aid experience memory problems and how would that be? I that think would it would affect them. Yeah, the, the definite impact. 
it would mm -hmm. impact they can't hear anything but but would we would we automatically think that they couldn't learn anything that's not a that wouldn't be a, a true statement they just that's how they learn and if they can't hear they're not learning so you know you think about our even this has nothing to do with age too just think about young children if they can't hear it they can't learn it so if they're using their auditory skills they're not learning that so so that's you know something to consider with you know family and friends too and, and obviously yourself so the visual learner the visual learner is someone who learns best by seeing or reading information. This type of learner may need to write things down repeatedly while trying to memorize something. A visual learner may have trouble remembering names or information while being introduced to someone in a group. They're not, remember they need that visual. I'm, I'm remembering Wendy because I see her face and I see her name on that screen. Why might a visual learner have trouble remembering names? If I just walked up and said, hi, I'm Jackie, what's missing? Seeing the name written. Seeing that name written, exactly. You're not seeing it. So you, you connect the two as a visual learner. Most of our world, we don't go around wearing name tags. So, so when we're, when we're uh, meeting folks or we're seeing people, being able to learn that without that visual part is difficult for that for that visual learner. Can a visual learner who isn't wearing his or his glass, his or her glasses experience memory problems? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They can't see that. So again, if you don't see it, hear it, or learn it, you're not, you're not learning things. It's not going into your memory. Okay, good, this is great. Okay, so look at this sentence and it says, Finished files are the result of years of scientific study combined with the experience of years. How many times does the letter F appear in this sentence? Three. I hear a three. And two. Five. Three. Five. I hear a five. Mm -hmm. F. One, two, three. It's an F. Six. I think it's I hear a six. Who said six? Letter F. Wendy. Okay. That's right. The letter F appears six times. Here is why some of you may or may not have found those. Someone who is an auditory learner hears the letter F. As in of, they hear it as a V of. They don't hear the F. So if I just said that sentence without you seeing it, and I was an auditory learner, all I mean, I don't hear all the F. Uh, and on contrary, a visual learner sees those Fs. You're, I could see y'all counting. I could tell y'all were looking at that sentence. And counting. So an, a visual learner is seeing the F for what it is and doesn't pay attention to the sounds that it's making. So I'm just looking Fs. I'm just going through looking for Fs. I'm not really saying those words. So a little different. That's the difference, auditory and visual learner. Does that mean that people who got four are more smarter than the people who got three? Not necessarily. It's just the way that you you learn, and that's that's part of your learning and the ability uh, that goes into that that memory part that you're learning that, and that's the memory. What if it mean? What does it mean if each of you learn the process information differently, even if you don't realize it? So we all learn it differently, and we all see it in a different way but it still goes into our memory. So kinesthetic learner, that's that touchy person, all right? The kinesthetic learner is probably the type of person that was a meddler when he or she was younger. They're always like touching things. You've seen those children, they're always touching, touching, but that's their learning process. They need to, you know, if you, if you looked at a piece of uh, leather, you would, you as a visual learner may be able to automatically in your memory from, from other uh, ways that you learn, know about what that leather feels like. You take a, um, uh, let's say a um, fleece blanket. Do you need to touch it to kind of know what that fleece might, might feel like? But that kinesthetic learner has to go touch it. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm, 
I'm always wanting to touch it. I know what it feels like, but touching it solidifies that in my mind too. So probably uh, that child that, that was always touching things is probably a kinesthetic learner. This type yeah. of learner will probably use a hand gesture to answer questions. You know, whenever you ask somebody to describe, how do you screw in a light bulb? They're going to automatically start using that hand gesture because in their mind, they're touching it. All right. right. That's Jackie, the yeah. When I, uh, when I was in education classes, we talked about this and I was kinesthetic because when I'm learning or listening or reading, I'm doing something else with my body. It's not just sitting still listening and looking. Uh, I have to be doing something else. Uh, and I didn't realize I was doing that until one of my instructors said, Kathy, the whole time you're doing there, you're sitting there bouncing your knee or your <laughs> leg or your, you know, that makes me kinesthetic. I have to do something else when I'm fully engaged to remember. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I had not, okay. I had not heard, because because I do watch people tap their knee, tap their foot, uh -huh. Uh, as they're reading or, or they're just doing different things. Yes, that's an error. Thanks. That's, that's a good way to describe that. So how, so here, this falls right in. Good segue. Can a kinesthetic learner who suffers from some type of mobility or ability impairment experience memory problems? Yes. If they can't move, if, if you can't move, and you, that's how you learn the much, just exactly how Kathy was describing it. If you can't learn, your body is not of dormant. Oh, that's, that's great. I have to remember that too. Good example. Thank you. Okay. I have another question for y'all. The next is question says, the no next idea. question will help the difference between auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. So how many states in the United States begin with the letter M? The letter M. Six. I hear a six. Six. Another six. I don't know. I, I just throw it out. <laughs> I just guessed. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I did. Okay. I hear another number. Martha says eight. Eight. Okay. Well, Martha is eight. That's right. Is it? So we have... We have Maine, follow along on the map. We have Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, and Montana. Now, here's what I can, I can, uh, I can bet that many of you probably looked at the map and began to go from one side to the other, maybe even touching the screen on your, on your computer. And some of those in your mind were just trying to think of M's, you know, and then and then making tick marks. So all of those are ways that you that you learn and uh, visualize or auditory, visual. You're saying it to yourself out loud in your mind, but you're also some maybe maybe need to be kinesthetic and start touching the map to follow it. Okay, all of those things are and those are little things to to challenge our mind too. We're going to talk some more. As we go, we'll talk more about brain exercising too. So we asked the question, why can't I, I remember? Many things may contribute to your inability to remember that are not related to your age or to the health of your brain. Other lessons in this, as we go through the series, will address these topics in more depth, but we will cover them just in a briefly moment here. Many times, you see the things on the screen right there. You can see all those things listed. Many times you cannot remember something because you never learned it in the beginning. Remember, in order to remember something, we have to have learned something. Also, once the information is stored, it may take a while for it to come back out. Remember, truly, as we age, it does take our, our recall is a little slower. And again, a speed with recall, recall uh, may decline in, as age, and that's your fluid intelligence. Often relaxing your mind will allow information to resurface again. We, we, you know, we just had some other sessions and I, I on, on memory and I, I mentioned to the groups that I was talking to, sometimes you just have to turn everything off and let your mind rest a little bit. Let your mind recharge. And, and but with all the distractions, it can't because it's still trying to process all of those. 
So sometimes we just need to let it relax. Medications and alcohol can impair your ability to remember and also recall information. Stress, grief, depression, and other emotional presses can affect your ability to remember and recall. When the brain is under pressure, it cannot function effectively. The brain needs certain nutrients to function properly. Without the right building blocks, the brain cannot make chemicals that make memories and allow for the retrieval of information. So we'll talk, we'll talk about all about all, all of these. We're just hitting on the high points today, but we'll talk about each one as we go in the sessions. Your daily habits can help you help you or hinder you when it comes to remembering things. Placing your keys in the same place for years. And then you decide, oh gee, I'm gonna get a little hook over here. And I'm gonna get, begin to put them now on a little hook in, inside the door. Well, your first response is to go to the place that you've always kept them for years. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing wrong with your memory. It was just that that was already in solidified in your memory and you went to the original spot. So it's not that you have a memory loss, it's just breaking your habit. I know I, I shared too, I'm real bad about something staying in one spot on my cabinet or my dresser. And then I decide one day, oh, I need to put that up. Well, I go put it up for safekeeping. And then I forget where I put it. And it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with my memory and it will eventually recall and I'll, you know, come back. But it's just that I changed what was, what I knew, what I knew in my, in my mind and what I had remembered of where it was. And I saw some of y'all nod and, and smile. So I think y'all have done the same thing too. <laughs> the best learner is well-rounded. They blend all the three types of learning and that's to flex the brain and make it sure to get the proper exercise. The principle of use it or lose it applies to the brain much like it does the rest of our body. By stimulating your brain and making it think about Diff, uh, things different in different ways, you're building a better brain capacity. Again, we, we need to exercise our legs, exercise our arms, we need to exercise our brain. And we're going to talk a little bit before we're over and then more as we go into our other sessions. If you did the same thing, the same leg exercise, the same arm exercise every day, those muscles will, those muscles will do pretty good. You'll get those exercises. But what if you change that motion the next day? Gee, those other muscles are being used. So we have to change those processes for our brain too. You need to vary those activities. Find ways to make the things that you do every day a little different and challenging. And I, I challenge for some of the examples that, that um, we see on the, on the screen there, word games, brain teasers, uh, I even mentioned to other groups is new recipes, new ways to make recipes, recipes that need new uh, utensils or different utensils, or they're mixed differently. Uh, anything that you do, and, and, and uh, if you wanna unmute or in the chat box, what are some of the things that, that you use to keep your brain active and learning? Um, sometimes I will use the opposite hand that I know my non-dominant hand to do the routine things just to challenge my body or if I'm going to step up a step I step with my non-dominant foot uh, so that I'm making it different changing that right Wendy you is so funny that's the example that he he had in just a, in a just a bit later if you're used to using your right if you're right-handed you use your right hand to do the crossword puzzle use your left hand you know, and do something different. You should switch those out. That's a that's the perfect example he used in 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 here too. Anybody else? What do you what do you use at, at home or or to exercise that brain and and uh, keep it fresh? I'm on Kathy's exercise class. <laughs> Oh, Kathy's exercise. Yeah, she, no, really, it helps a lot. It makes those muscles work that don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, in that same regard, if when you're doing those exercise classes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a step. 
you know, you're stepping different, you're walking different, and then she changes that and it walks it. All of those make your, you know, cause your brain to change. So right foot forward, right foot forward, then a minute left foot forward. And it's kind of like Wendy says, stepping differently. But all of those motions, you're thinking, well, I'm using my muscles. That's true, but you're using your brain too because it's exercising that brain to think differently uh, and, and do those motions different. Good example. Anybody else? And hi, hi Lisa, if, if there's anybody chatting in the chat box, you have to let me know. Yeah. Um, what about, who, oh, go ahead. Uh, so I don't know where Kathy had left off, but it says um, from Martha to everyone, oh, I miss Jackie. Did you get that one? No. I'm not on computer, so I don't have a camera, but I can see you and hear you, Martha. I read the directions. Yes, yes we did hear those. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lisa. Uh -huh. yes. Who, who uh, and, and you can, you can, I mean, chat or raise your hand. Who does Sudoku? What? Okay. How many of you do play card games? Or dominoes? I'm gonna scroll down and see other pictures. Okay. Uh, what, what happens in card games? Martha raised her hand, so yes, she does. What happens in card games? What are you, what are you doing when you're, when you're looking at card games? Well, you may be figuring out what cards are left that could be played. Yes, you're counting, you're counting and you're trying to keep up with those. Those are excellent, excellent ways to keep your brain and exercise that brain. When you're playing dominoes, you're counting, you're counting those dominoes and when you're playing those, all of those things. Sudoku, you're counting all those numbers up. Um, uh, word, word teasers, uh, word scrambles. Everybody has their favorite, but here's the thing on the on that. You have your favorite and you always do it all the time. Now you get to have it, right? Where do you learn something new? When you pick up something different. So if you're always doing crossword puzzle, try Sudoku. It's a number. It's a number puzzle. So just, just think about those things as we as you go through next week between this Friday and next Friday in our class. Just think about those things that you pick up as you're doing and you go, huh, what if I did that? What if I turn the knob on the door with my less dominant than my right dominant on my hand? So that, that challenges that brain to think differently too. So when we look at every, every week, we're going to have a little something for you to think about in between. And so I mentioned something about trying something different, but he's got a little... Uh, and actually, the, I, I did not write this and I did not develop this curriculum. One of our specialists did, Dr. Andy Crocker, he developed these. So one of the things that, that he has for our first session is that uh, for homework and fun, I want you to think about unlocking or locking the door. Which direction would you turn the key to lock the front door of your house? Now picture yourself inside. Which direction would you turn the bolt to lock or unlock the door. Do the same for a light bulb. Try to describe each of these actions using different methods we talked about today, our visual, our auditory, our kinesthetic. After you've mastered these, try to come up with other activities on your own. So, you know, the first time you try to tell somebody again, uh, you know, how you're going to screw or unscrew the light bulb, you know, my hand automatically goes up because where are light bulbs are typically, right? So in my mind, I'm all automatically doing it. But what if I couldn't move my arm and I had to tell somebody? So think about how you would exercise your, your uh, brain and think about those, those ways that you would do that. I hope that you've enjoyed this first session of Master of Memory and uh, Watch for my email either late Wednesday or Thursday morning, late Wednesday evening or Thursday morning with some the, the lesson for the next time your handout. And that one will have some, some handouts for you to write on that you can take a few notes uh, during our session too. So uh, watch for an email from me and uh, we'll, we will uh, share those. Uh, do you have any questions before we 
before we close today. I'm not in a hurry to close. Just do you have any questions? Thank you for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoy this. Yes. Thank you. Thank a you. lot of the things I know and a lot of the things I have to be refreshed on. So and, and that's yes. great. This is not technical. This is not, uh -huh. you know, in depth, but it's it's it a lot of this helps us just remind of ourselves of things uh -huh. and how we want to. Um, I don't know uh, another another brain extra, you know, whether you read. A lot, I think that I've, I have read a lot that um, that is one of the key features of keeping our brain healthy is reading. And anything that you pick up and read, um, <laughs> the paper, books, recipe, anything you read, um, I don't care if you read the side of a, a, a box with the, the nutrition label on it. You know, the more that we do that, the healthier we stay, our, our brain and memory stays healthy too. How many I've got, I know that a few of you have finished the Qualtrics, uh, we call it Qualtrics, but the, the survey that I uh, sent to you, I know some did, and I'm gonna ask that everyone do that is if they haven't, go into the email and click on that, it won't take but about five minutes. Uh, to finish that. Wendy's nodding. So thank you for filling that out. It, it shouldn't take long, uh, but try to fill it out before the next class. It helps us uh, improve our courses and again, uh, gets us some, some data. And it's all, uh, it's all confidential. There's no name on there. So I won't know anyone by, by who it is. Um, so any other questions or any other comments? Yes, um, a friend was going to be on and she's out of town. Where is the recording found? Uh, Kathy, Lisa, Kathy mentioned earlier that um, they will have to uh, store the uh, recording and have to let us know where they stored it. So we, and, yeah, and so we will get that out to you. And, and I did have someone ask about that also. I don't know if it's the same person, but I did have someone ask about it and we'll just have to get that out. And after, um, we'll make arrangements to get it sent. Yeah, and it could probably call, Jackie, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I would say probably call the 298-5403 and, and just, it might be easier just to telephone. That way we can, because there's so few of them, um, we can let you know where they're going to store it. Okay, so is that number to you, Lisa? It's to the front desk. Okay, that'll be fine. So if y'all call the number Lisa mentioned, then the, there they'll let you know where it's stored. Okay, good questions. Anything else before we we uh, close for the day? We're right about forty five minutes, and that's about what these are, uh, give or take some time depending on the discussion. Next um, week, oh, Martha wanted me to repeat the number. It's of course area code two five four two nine eight five four. Zero three, and that's the salmons, the right? All right, look for an email from me next week. Um, I will um, see you on the 23rd and every Friday afterwards until May 21st. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. I appreciate all the discussion and you joining us today. And y'all have a good weekend. Hey, thank you. Oh, thank you. you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. we'll see you Bye bye now. Bye bye. Let's see if you Lisa, I'm going